All right. Hi. My name is Rob, and I'm sure I'm not the only one here that, that enjoys rye whiskey. <laughs> Tonight, I'm talking about a little-known episode of, of, of American history, uh, which still casts a shadow today. In, in uh, September 11th, 1791, Robert Johnson was waylaid near Pigeon Creek in Washington County, Pennsylvania, by 18 men, some dressed as women and others with their faces blackened. They shaved his head, stole his clothes and his horse, and then tarred and feathered him, leaving him to walk home alone in the dark. His crime? Accepting an appointment to collect the federal excise tax in Washington and Allegheny counties. No. <laughs> to learn how we got here, let's step into our time machine and set the dial for Pittsburgh Pennsylvania, 1790, at the start of the Industrial Revolution. Science, Science yes. <laughs> Maps. 229 years ago, this area was the USA's frontier. Imagine living in what we call the third world without paved roads, anything depending on electricity, and most manufactured goods. If you're a small farmer on the frontier somewhere west of the Allegheny Mountains, in, in, Western, in, in, uh, in Western Pennsylvania, uh, we're talking specifically here about um, um, Allegheny County, um, Westmoreland County, Fayette County, uh, and over here Bedford County comes into it later, and Washington County. To get from uh, Philadelphia here, which is the nearest big city to you, and has less than, or excuse me, Pitt, Pittsburgh, which has uh, less than 400 people and is the nearest big city to western Pennsylvania, over to the capital of the state here in, in Philadelphia, it takes you several weeks. It's 300 miles of uh, dirt roads. And mountains, the Allegheny Mountains are right there. Your life is hard. You face diseases such as smallpox and the gleet, crop failure, increasing poverty, lack of paying jobs. Also, there are no banks around, so cash money is hard to come by. Most of your economic activity is through the barter system. Further west, the Northwest Indian War is going badly, and the federal government isn't protecting you from Indian raids or doing much of anything else. The Spanish are blockading the Mississippi River, so you can't get your products to or from the, the big city in New Orleans. Yes. Boats, yes. <laughs> These farmers grew primarily rye along with corn, barley, and or wheat. But raw grain doesn't compress well for travel. What they didn't need for themselves, they distilled into whiskey. Rye whiskey was used for barter on the frontier, and it was much easier to ship overland for cash, making it one of the most important commodities on the frontier. Estimates say that, estimates say that uh, Washington County had about one still per every 10 families, and that 25% of the nation's stills were located in the four counties we talked about a little while ago. <laughs> you double the value of your grain, by distilling it into whiskey and quadruple that if you can ship the whiskey over the mountains to the East Coast. What's more, Monongahela rye was known as good whiskey because of the quality of the rye the farmers grew, the excellence of the water in the area, and the masterful work of those practice distillers. Now, Alexander Hamilton is about to make your life harder. <laughs> He's living in Philadelphia, which is the capital of the of the United States and also of, of Pennsylvania. He has a sweet new constitution and his new job is the first secretary of the treasury, which means he needs to figure out how to pay off $79 million in debt the, the US still owes the allies from the Revolutionary War. And that debt, to put it in modern terms, is worth $6 trillion as a percentage of GDP. Um, in his world, whiskey is a luxury and maybe needs a syntax. In other words, he has little, very little in common with the people living on the frontier. Sound familiar? <laughs> Hamilton should have known the excess, 
excise tax was going to fail because they always had. But that fellow in the city of the bro brotherly love has a federal government to pay for, and revenue from tariffs is not enough to make the nut. Thus, in 1790, the Whiskey Act is passed, and it becomes law on March, in March of 1791, and it requires payment in cash. <laughs> But it is not just that the tax is unpopular, it is also regressively implemented. Every still has to be registered with the government. Different tax rates are based either on the annual projected capacity of your still or the volume of whiskey that you actually produce. Hamilton has let large distillers pay a lower flat rate, reinforcing the perception he favored big businesses. Our little far frontier farmers were getting unfairly taxed on the product that was crucial to their livelihoods, and they were not having it. For vexillologists in the crowd, <laughs> our, our rebels had several flags. This one has six flags, six stripes for the counties that we mentioned earlier, plus Bedford County in Pennsylvania and Ohio County in, uh, in Virginia, and it, the flag evolved. This version of the flag here is the one you find on Amazon most, most commonly, and vexillologists say that uh, that one was probably uh, created after the fact. <laughs> From 1791 into 1794, no battles were fought, but there was widespread agitation against and resistance to the tax along the frontier. Anonymous messages by Tom the Tinker were posted in western Pennsylvania and printed in the papers, threatening not only those who collected the tax, but also those who paid it. Later, Tom the Tinker's boys started burning the houses of their neighbors that were paying the tax and mending or destroying their stills, as well as harassing tax collectors. The only battle that took place was an attack on a, a, a mansion owned by General John Neville, Neville was a boyhood friend of President Washington, the owner of a still that could produce 500 gallons, and also one of the richest and most powerful men in the area. His connection to the POTUS kept Western Pennsylvania in the spotlight. As the inspector of revenue, Neville was determined and hard-nosed in enforcing it and widely hated. The, uh, the the uh, second day of the battle at, at Bower Hill, federal troops came in from Fort Pitt in order to reinforce uh, Neville, but they, they eventually surrendered, left, and the, the whole facility was burned. Because government troops were at Bower Hill, it was treason, and Washington called out the, the militia. Um, this is George Washington leading the troops. He was the only president to lead U.S. troops in the field. Nearly 13,000 men uh, were, were in the field. They were hastily assembled, poorly provisioned, and their supply trains could not keep up, leading many to forage through the countryside, earning them the name of the Watermelon Army. Early in November, the army arrived in Pittsburgh, having encountered no armed resistance. One soldier wrote, no expedition during the last war, nor a nor if Hannibal's passage over the Alps could equal the, most, the almost insuperable hardships we had suffered. For the finale, uh, we, uh, uh, on November 29th, General Lee, but not that General Lee, this General Lee, Gen General Henry Lighthorse Lee, issued a general pardon to the rebels. Even so, 24 men were arrested and taken to Philadelphia. Ten were tried for treason and two were convicted. President Washington pardoned them, helping to establish his legacy as a merciful president. And after leaving the White House in 17, uh, after leaving the White House, George Washington returned to his Mount Vernon estate and built a still, a distillery. In 1799, he was the largest commercial distiller in the, in the U.S., producing as much as 10% of the rye whiskey on the market. Whiskey rye, whiskey. <laughs> Indeed. 
even after the rebellion in Pennsylvania was quashed, the excise ta tax remained uh, deeply unpopular and, on the frontier and uncollectible in some regions. This man uh, repealed the excise tax in 1802. However, Abraham Lincoln had to reimpose the excise tax in 1861 because he had a civil war to pay for. And in 1913, with prohibition on the horizon, the federal income tax was finally established, giving the federal government a consistent source of revenue. So you see, the Whiskey Rebellion had far-reaching impacts. Issues of economic, amongst uh, the reasons that this is important today, um, issues of economic inequality are still with, it, with us. The Whiskey Rebellion was the event that set precedence for the authority of the federal government, interests of, West, of rural Interests of rural and urban populations are as divergent now as they were then. Washington helped cement his presidential legacy with his moderate and leniency towards the, the rebels, and that tone has set the example for most of the presidents to follow. <laughs> In conclusion, the Whiskey Rebellion and insurrection might have been avoided if all the parties involved had sat down over a bottle or a barrel of rye whiskey and figured out a way to implement a fair and equitable excise tax. So, yes. let's, so let's raise a toast to those who negotiate and get things done without bloodshed. Yes. Thank you very much.